Hi, and this is part two of the video in which I consider uh, the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the LDS take on why we need uh, the Book of Mormon. Uh, and this is, of course, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints website, right? So, uh, you know, it's, a, it's kind of like, a, it's not a very long article, so I'm just going to go through every point they make and then I'm going to comment, okay? Paragraph by paragraph, okay? So, here are just a few reasons why the Book of Mormon is essential according to the LDS Church, the LDS Christians. Uh, another witness of Jesus Christ, quote, the scriptures show us a pattern of using multiple witnesses to establish truth in Christ's church. The Book of Mormon adds a second witness to the Bible as a testimony of Christ. Elder Mark E. Peterson, 1900, 1984, of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles once said, quote, the chief, re the chief reason we have the Book of Mormon is that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall all things be established. 2 Corinthians 30, 13, 1. We have the Bible. We also have the Book of Mormon. They constitute, constitute two voices, two volumes of scripture from two widely separated ancient peoples, both bearing testimony to the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. President Ezra Toft Benson, 1899, 1994, has added, quote, we must not forget that the Lord himself provided the Book of Mormon as his chief witness. Okay, let's unpack this one. Um... Okay, the Book of Mormon as a second witness to the Bible as a testimony of Christ, no problem. I would say, a, well, yeah, as a testimony of Christ. But if you really want to meet the God of Abraham, then you need to go in the Tanakh and you need to go in the Quran. I think, and also, you also need to meet uh, Mary in the Quran, in the Miriam Surah. I, I, I actually, I, I mean, I, I am not Muslim. But I consider the Miriam Suda, Sura, the Sura Miriam, that when it talks about the nativity and, and whatever, uh, and Mary, that I, I consider it to be uh, canonical for me. Because I prefer the Quranic account of the nativity to that of the New Testament. That's just my personal choice. I mean, there are two different versions of the nativity, and you can choose one or the other. So I choose the Quranic one. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, and there's also information in the, in, the, in, the, in the Holy Quran about Jesus Christ. So, I mean, yeah, definitely, if you want to meet Christ, you know, go into the New Testament. Uh, go into, you know, the Book of Mormon, uh, Third Nephi. Uh, and then go into, you know, Surah Miriam in the Quran and check out his, the, story, the Quranic account of his, the nativity. You know, and yeah, if you want to really, you know, get really... I would also say you need to look at the at the Gospel of Thomas, and uh, you know, and, the, and yeah, and yeah, but sayings of Jesus, right, from the Gnostic perspective, um, yeah, and then you can get a, like a rounded view of Jesus, at least, you know, the 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 Jesus of the Jesus of the diverse scriptures, right, as opposed to the historical Jesus, which is a separate Jesus, yeah, so. For me, Jesus is two Jesuses here. There is the Jesus of the scriptures and then of the variable scriptures, the body of variable scriptures, which are not necessarily harmonic. And then there is the, the historical Jesus, which is the Jesus of history. So, you know, the son of man and the son of God, if you want to say it that way. If you want to look at it, or if you want to look at it in, in sort of like Nestorian terms, tu uh, pnome one prosopon, right? There is only one prosopon. However, he has two aspects. The Son of Man and the Son of God, yeah, okay. The Jesus of the Scriptures, the Jesus of uh, the Jesus of History. If you want to look at it that way, that, that's the way, kind of like the way I conceptualize it. Uh, yeah, okay. Testimony of Christ. All right. Yeah, Book of Mormon. Sure. Third Nephi visited the Americas. Um, yeah. So, and I, I mean, I believe the Book of Mormon is a, is, is a witness. It's not just a second witness, but it's also also an instrument of restoration. Um, and I believe the Book of Mormon originates, you know, with deity, with divinity, as much as any other of these other scriptures, you know. And quite frankly, quite frankly, I find that the, the Holy Quran and the Book of Mormon have more authority than, than, than you know, than the, the New Testament Be, or the Bible. Because there is many versions of the Bible, but there is only one version of the Book of Mormon and one version of the Holy Quran, you know. So you can say that the Book of Mormon is more reliable as a consistent, you know, established thing as, as opposed to many versions. Where I mean, if you go in like Bible Hub or Bible Gateway, 
Gateway. And you have to check out all, what, if you check a passage on Bible Hub or Bible Gateway, you know, there is a tab where you, you can choose like a whole list of different versions of the Bible. And in many of those versions, the thing is different. I mean, not, 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 not different to, in, in like essence, but different in, in wording, different in arrangement of the semantics. Some words are uh, different words are used sometimes, you know. I made a video, a couple of videos about the, the name of God, Jehovah, with the Jehovah's Witnesses, you know what I mean? Um, in, in their Bible, it, Jehovah, in some other Bibles, it says Lord, whatever. Yeah, anyway, that's not the case with the Book of Mormon or the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran and the Book of Mormon are reliable. Uh, anyhow. Uh, so here we get, we have the, the, the LDS Church. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints take on the two witnesses, right? In Jehovah's Witnesses, the two witness rule is used uh, is used to like uh, establish um, truth in judicial in in judicial proceedings. So when a person is being disfellowshipped, and uh, you know you get your meeting with the elders, the trial or whatever with the elder, when they you have to yeah, um, then you know it goes by the two witness rule, right? So. If the witnesses say that you did something or didn't do something, then it happened, right? And that was also the thing in the Middle Ages, uh, in the middle, in medieval Europe, in uh, you know the Catholic medieval Catholic Europe, uh, you know it was. I mean, there were offenses that carried the death, automatic death penalty, uh, you know, heresy, uh, witchcraft, heathenism, sodomy, and Jewry. So if you if if you know two witnesses told the village priest that uh, you were engaged in any of those activities, you you, you know you 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 were guilty until pr proven innocent. So if you didn't prove your innocence, you were toast. They would kill you because they had to remove the 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 they had it's like pruning the 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 bad the bad um, grape to preserve the others. They in order to preserve in order to um, ensure the benevolence of God towards the village, they had to eliminate that which offended God from the village. And that meant you, if you were accused of any of those things and you couldn't prove that you didn't do them, right? So you were a guilty until proven innocent if two people accuse you of any of those offenses, especially witchcraft and sodomy. So anyways, um, yeah, so, okay. So the LDS take on, on the, on the, um, and the two witness rule is that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall all things be established, Second Corinthians thirteen one. So for them, the two or three witnesses is the Bible and the Book of Mormon. Okay, all right. And I, I guess I guess they also include their 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 version of the Doctrine and Covenants. All right. Okay. Next, Full, the fullness of the gospel. Quote: We know that plain and precious things have been taken away from the Bible throughout time. First Nephi thirteen forty. What does First Nephi thirteen forty have to say about this? Let's see. I just want to read it just to make sure. Um, and I, I have my handy desktop here. Um, okay. Uh, First Nephi thirteen forty. Quote: And the angel spake unto me, saying, These last records which thou hast seen among the Gentiles shall establish the truth of the first which are of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, and shall make known the plain and precious things which have been taken away from them, and shall make known to all kindreds, tongues, and people that the Lamb of God is the Son of the Eternal Father, and the Savior of the world, and that all men must come to Him, or they cannot be saved. Okay? All right. So, yeah. Okay. Here in the Book of Mormon, First Nephi 13, 40. It's, yeah, pretty, pretty clear. Um... Yeah, these last records shall establish the truth of the first. So in, in here, you know, the um, Book of Mormon is there to, like, reaffirm the authority of the New Testament. Okay. All right. That's LDS take. Good. good. Um, right. Um, the Book of Mormon clarifies Christ's doctrine and brings the fullness of the gospel to the earth once again. See First Nephi. 1338-41, for example, the Book of Mormon helps us know that baptism must be performed by immersion and that little children do not need to be baptized, right? So, uh, yeah, and um, in, uh, in, um, in the LDS church, baptism is by immersion, right? 
and I have undergone the baptism in the LDS Church, and that is the baptism that I recognize, the baptism in the LDS Church, not the baptism in the Jehovah's Witnesses or the baptism. I mean, I've been baptized three times. I was baptized as, a, I was baptized as an infant in the Catholic Church. I was baptized as a Jehovah's Witness, and I was baptized in the LDS Church. The one that I recognize is the LDS Church. I do not recognize the uh, infant baptism, and I do not recognize the Jehovah's Witness baptism. I recognize the LDS baptism. So, and then shall ye immerse them in the water and come forth again out of the water. Exactly. So you, in the Pentecostal, in the Pentecostal, you know, movement, um, you die and are reborn with Jesus Christ, and and you immerse in the water and you emerge from the water represents that you you die to your old self and resurrect as a new person. Um, and that's paraphrased. That's grossly paraphrased, but yeah. Ask a Pentecostal what baptism means to them. Don't ask me, ask them. Okay? And you can go to the Pentecostal Church website and check it out. Ask them the question. Um, excuse me, I need to drink some water. Uh, mm. Central to the restored church. Joseph Smith testified that the Book of Mormon is, quote, the keystone of our religion, end quote. Since we know this, it does not seem a coincidence that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was organized on April 6, 1830, just 11 days after the Book of Mormon was first available for public sale on March 26, 1830. The church was not organized until its keystone scripture was available for, for its members, okay? In other words, before Joseph Smith and his his uh, apostles or people or whatever who he was working with, uh, bishops, whatever, before the group that set up the uh, Church of, of Jesus Christ did so, they made sure the Book of Mormon was available to the members, right? Because they wanted to get, in other words, the Book of Mormon came first, the restored script, the restorationist scripture, the instrument of restoration came first, and then came the church. Right? It's not the case that you first have a church and then you throw in a book. No. First comes the book and then the ecclesia. Right? That's very sort of like, um, yeah, it's, it's a very, it's, it fits the psychology of 19th century restorationism because the, the, um, the concept of restorationism they had in the, in, the, in the 19th century North America was that they, their, their, their a template for the restoration of the Ecclesia was the Book of Acts. So, yeah. Um, so that, yeah. And for, in other words, first we consult the Book of Acts, and then, based on what we see in the Book of Acts, we proceed to structure, structure the Ecclesia, the appropriate Ecclesia, or what have you. That was the approach. And uh, this is paraphrased, simplified. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm simplifying things here because I, don't, I have only a small amount of time. Okay, last reason why... The last, the last reason why we need the Book of Mormon, according to the LDS uh, Christian Church, otherwise known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the largest Mormon denomination, but not the only one. Um, yeah, a blessing in our lives. Regarding the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith thought that a man would get nearer to God by abiding by its precepts than by any other book. It has the power to change lives, including yours and those who share the Book of Mormon with with President Henry V. A. Ring, first counselor of the first presidency, has testified, quote, the effect of the Book of Mormon on your character, power and courage to be a witness for God is certain. The doctrine and the valiant examples in that book will lift, guide and embolden you. Prayerfully study of the Book of Mormon. Prayerful study of the Book of Mormon will build faith in God the Father, in His beloved Son, and His Gospel. If you build your faith in God's prophets, ancient and modern, you can draw you, it can draw you closer to God than any other book. It can change a life for the better. Okay. After Joseph Smith was executed in 1844, uh, the Mormon Church splintered. Uh, not everybody followed Brigham Young to Utah. There were other people who went up. Uh, followed other people. There were several factions after Joseph Smith died, You're right? So, depending on who, who's the, depending on which faction, uh, you know, you talk to, the appropriate modern prophet is to be listened to or what have you. So, yeah, but it, it's true. It can change a life for the better. Yes, the Book of Mormon has, you know, and actually my interaction with the LDS Christian Church was very positive. Came the LDS Mormons, 
uh, you know, the LDS Mormons, and they introduced me here, how the Book of Mormon. Here, in, in Third Nephi, Jesus visited the Americas. It's the same Beatitudes that he taught the, the, the Israelis. Here it is. You know? So, the Book of Mormon, I adopted the Book of Mormon, and, and you know, I became baptized into the LDS Church, and then I, 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 I live according to the Word of Wisdom. And uh, so I am drug, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, sugar, free, and I am vegetarian, right? Uh, and the reason I am that person, I am, I am, I am ultra strict, straight edge slash word of wisdom. And now, you know, I am, um, I am committed to my political and religious values. You know, I am committed to the communist manifesto. I am a primitive Marxist committed to the politics of the communist manifesto, the first international. And in terms of theology, I am committed to the book of Mormon and to restorationism. So I follow uh, on the one hand, I follow community of Christ, and on the other hand, I follow the uh, uh, the Restoration Church, uh, the Primitive Church, uh, the, the excuse me, the uh, Restoration Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. So I follow the Restoration Church and Community of Christ theologically, while being organized politically with Esbenes uh, Comunistas Caparti as a primitive Marxist.